It is not easy for shaitan to deceive people until he uses some tools and tricks, which are very difficult to be realized as tools of shaitan. That's why he easily deceives mankind. So what are those tools and tricks? This is the most useful way through which shaitan deceives the people. Shaitan is constantly trying to show the wrong as truth, putting beautiful names on haram things. He makes haram so beautiful in your eyes until he incites you to commit that haram action. As he himself says, Iblis used the same tool to deceive Adam السلام, eating from a tree that was forbidden to them. Iblis made this action very beautiful and told them, if you eat from this tree, you will be forever in paradise, or you became angels. So he made it so beautiful until they obeyed what shaitan said and they were cast down to the earth. Also in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Another tool that Satan is using is to cause delay in performing good deeds. He tells you that you have still time, you have more time for prayer, do it later. He brings indolence in you until the prayer time is gone. I've heard of so many youths, they said, I have enough time for prayers, it's time for enjoying the life. When I become old then it's time to pray or repent. Oh really? What if your death time arrives in younger ages? Don't delay your prayers from time to time. If you want to do it tomorrow, do it today. And if today, why later? Just do it now. Don't let Satan to steal your time. Shaitan loves to see what are the wishes and the weaknesses of the people. And he gives them promises. He shows them the green lights which lead them astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> Shaitan makes you busy with beautiful desires, the desires which has no real benefit for you. He makes you busy with collecting money, gaining reputation, and fulfilling the temporary pleasures. And finally, you'll understand that your time is over, and you have got nothing. Just for a moment, think about those who are the richest ones. Can their wealth help them to buy a single minute when their lives are over? Of course not. Why? Because their wealth is in reality just a mirage, which cannot benefit them except if they spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Satan leads people astray and claims that he is benevolent to them and he wants the good for them, as it is mentioned in the story of Adam alayhi salam. <laughs> Same is the case with other people as shayateen are deceiving them in different ways and claim for benevolence to them. Another trick that Satan is using is that he misguide people step by step. He can't suddenly cause someone to commit major sins. The prerequisite step to major sins are the minor ones. It is a tool by which shaitan infuses doubt into the hearts of the people and brings their belief to the unstable situation. It is reported that Prophet ﷺ said that shaitan comes to you and asks who created this, who created that, until he asks the question who created Allah. Our Prophet ﷺ commanded us that if you came to such questions, 
Just seek refuge to Allah from the evil of shaitan. Here the evil of shaitan refers to having doubt. Although the question has answer which have been explained in our previous lectures, but even if we didn't have answer for any question, we shouldn't weaken our belief and let to be targeted by shaitan. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إنما الخمر والميسر والأنصاب والأزلام رجس من عمل الشيطان رجس من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوه لعلكم تفلحون Whoever listens to the magicians, whoever walks to the magicians, whoever believes in the magicians becomes a disbeliever in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because one of the acts that seeks to nullify Allah's power is magic. With a magician, the moment you see the way he works, you begin to ask yourself, isn't this person so powerful? Aren't they so holy? You start forgetting God. What begins to happen is, your whole focus is on that particular person. The biggest deviation, those innocent people are being accused by someone who claims to know the unseen. Do you know how they operate? They have a link with the jinn sometimes. That too is prohibited. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Jinn, Allah speaks about it. Allah says, part of the things that are mentioned, He says, and from amongst the issues that are taking place, there are people from mankind who are seeking assistance from those of jinn kind and those of jinn kind are leading them further astray. That's a Quranic verse. Open Surah Al-Jinn and read it. So this man with a big beard, mashallah, pink turban that is as long as ever, mashallah, you know, huge item. And he tells you, say, subhanallah. You say, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Say, alhamdulillah. Say, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Right. Now, let me tell you what's wrong with you. You need to take this, these petals and these lemons and this piece and do this and do that. And you need to do everything together and you will be better. So you say, shukran, jazakumullah khair. You know, mashallah, this man did not take any money. Nothing happened. He took your iman. That's what he did. What is the consequence? They will put a tag. They dangle something. The first thing they did, they will laugh at Allah and have insulted the messenger to say, ha, 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 ha. You told them to put their head, your, their head on the ground. We promised you we will deviate them. Here they are. They're ready to cut lemons and they're ready to put roses and they're ready to do things that made no sense for us, not for you. Do you know? They just took away your iman. They made you worship the devil and you don't even know. And you're happy. You're still saying, Allahu Akbar. If you go to the Sunnah, the most authentic book for Muslims, any Muslim Sunni, you would ask him, you would say Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the most authentic book on earth after the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that there will be people of my ummah making haram things halal. And they would make uh, uh, adultery, fornication. They would make silk. They would make consuming intoxicants, khamr. And music instruments halal. Four things. The Prophet ﷺ told us that there will come people who would make these haram things halal. So the Prophet is the one who told us that music is haram. This is real. As some scholars refer to music, they refer to it as the Quran of Shaitan. Satan's Quran. And it goes into the heart. And it occupies the heart. And when it occupies the heart, there's no room for the Quran of Allah. That's the reality. It squeezes it out. So when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu warned us about it, he warned us about something which was dangerous. Dangerous for our souls.